Thank you very much, Dr. Sharp. And our last speaker, Ms. Carol Jagannath, one of our IGDS um, minor program students. Carol. Yes. Pleasant good afternoon to everyone. All protocols observed. My job here today is to simply give my viewpoint from also a student's perspective. In an article on the 24th of October, this is in the Newsday, and I quote, the decision, first of all, is definitely up for a community to decide. Very few people under 14 years get married in Trinidad and Tobago. In fact, within the last few years, there wasn't any it is there as a safety net. This was quoted from Mr. Satnarain Maharaj's statement. However, it was brought to light that his claim had a little bit of a flaw because the CSO, which is the Central Statistical Office, said that females between the ages, sorry, under the ages of 15 during the period 1997 to 2007 showed six Muslims being married, that is again under the age of 15, 60 Hindu, 60, and 28 other. The whole issue of the Marriage Act, act rather, brings to mind myself as a young woman, I would stand here for the, the student pop representing the student population of, Trin of University of the West Indies, Right? It is, it is a contentious issue because as a young academic, I'm very nervous, so please bear with me. As a young academic, I stand having the opportunity to be given an education, rights, freedom of expression, freedom of choice, and so on. So to put an age on when I should or should not get married is I don't want to use the word an attack, but it, 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 it causes concern in terms of sexuality. But what really is sexuality? The World Health Organization defines sexuality, and they gave a little quote here. Sexuality is a central aspect of being human throughout life and encompasses sex, gender identities and roles, sexual orientation, eroticism, pleasure, intimacy, and reproduction. Sexuality is experienced, again, sexuality is experienced and expressed in thoughts, fantasies, desires, beliefs, attitudes, values, behaviors, practices, roles, and relationship. That's life in a nutshell. While sexuality can include all of these dimensions, not all of them are always experienced or expressed. Sexuality is influenced by the interaction of biological, psychological, social, economic, political, cultural, ethical, legal, historical, religious, and spiritual factors. Considering this definition, as a young woman, I believe that the age consent clause in the Marriage Act is a legal, cultural, spiritual, and religious influence to control my sexuality as a young woman. In the article in the Trinidad Guardian 2001, The Truth About Marriages, and I have it here in front of me, I was an ardent nerd in secondary school, so I collected articles. Sat Maraj reiterated, the truth is that the custom of child marriages was the Hindu response to rape and abductions by the, by girls, sorry, of girls by the Mughal invaders. He admitted that Hindu women were married, not as children, but in their late teens or older. Child marriage can therefore be possibly looked at as a practice of sexuality or more so a, a control measure. Past documentaries, just to give you a little bit of the worldview, because when we do our assignments, they ask us always go from the worldview to specifics, so I'm going in that direction. Past documentaries by uh, authors such as UNICEF, ethnographic researchers, and filmmakers have revealed the repercussions of early marriages. Now, this is a worldview I am just reiterating. They include health problems during pregnancy, domestic violence, inequity as it relates to educational opportunities, and suicides, as just almost happened, as Dr. Sharp right, so rightly said, with the experience she just gave to you all. It affects mostly developing countries where the society has a high proportion of poverty and illiteracy. One illustration in Nepal where over 500 to 600 child marriages have been performed 
And when I was looking at the documentary, what the guy said is that he usually proliferates to them to please stop it, but because it's an improvised state and dowry and so on, they can't admit it because of their socio-economic background. This is why they marry them off young to avoid having to give that large dowry system. Most time, the act is done due to the family of the girl, again, being unable to meet the dowry commitments as put forward by the boy's parents. They say that the earlier the age of marriage, the safer it is for their well-being. YouTube videos, as I just said, such as a documentary put forward by Him Gyap Tashi, an unsolved fact, a documentary on child marriages in Nepal, one underage bride said, and I quote, family and the custom compelled me to get marriage in my childhood against my wish. I had no hope for life when I gave birth to this infant in my early age. Fortunately, I survived it. She was 14. There are just, these are just one of the many women's predicaments and disadvantages faced by us worldwide and also in impoverished states. As it relates to Trinidad and Tobago, the Hindu Marriage Act does allow for child marriages. Senator the Honorable Verna St. Rose Graves, Minister of Gender, Youth and Child Development, pointed out that 32% of the population were poor single females. She also saw the need for amending the Marriage Act to increase the age, hence why we're here today. As a young woman, I have been afforded the opportunity of tertiary education, of tertiary education, independence and decision making in my private space, which is my home. However, I have very far to go in the public sphere as we continue to struggle for women being included. And just to wrap up some of what I was saying is that as a young woman, from my perspective, and as well as some others I spoke to, because I did my own little consultation informally, I have a right to choice, freedom of expression, realize my dream, and achieve one. I do not want to be disempowered as a woman. Reiterate the repercussion of child marriages, which was given earlier about health problems and so on. And just to give you all, in a nutshell, a final summary, I'm going to read a poem that I myself created based on this entire public forum. You call me chaste and pure. Your chains that control my sexuality, I must endure. Your rules, your game. Through, through the multicultural mask you gain, your fame. I dream, I aspire, I wish. But you feed me your food on this marriage dish. I too want to see the world to the third eye that belongs to me. Not through the one that you say it should be, a wife, a mother, a friend, a worker, aunt, or grandmother. See the world through me, not only through your imposed post-colonial identity. Religious ideology is a precursor of who holds the key to owning my sexual identity. Truth or fable, you say it makes me stable. Why do you marginalize me, oppress me, belittle me, chastise me? All I want to do is be me, not be a victim of marriage because of my virginity. In your eyes, I am a child. For the world, I am the future. Where is my say to determine my future today? Because I am woman, does not mean I should submit to dominion. I am human. I live in my own freedom of expression. So let me live. Let me dream. Let me define my own chastity, which starts with me being me and not a replication of the ideology of society. And that in itself is through the eyes of someone who sees the, the clauses in the Marriage Act as having, going towards disempowerment of women. We, I agree with my fellow colleagues that the law indeed needs to be changed. I'll reiterate it. Let me define my own chastity, which starts with me being me and not a replication of the ideology of society. Thank you.